Welcome to the, uh, the last lecture, the 60th lecture of surface engineering. Uh, we have covered uh, quite a bit and I hope uh, during the course of all these lectures, uh, we could arouse sufficient uh, interest in you about surface engineering and its utility and scopes of application. Uh, but before we wind today, I thought uh, I would review the overall uh, scope of surface engineering again including uh, the scheme of classification because classification is a way of uh, actually addressing the entire subject domain and also take a, a summary look or bird's eye view so that we know exactly what is the overall scope and uh, uh, what are the different uh, possibilities of application. So before we talk about uh, surface engineering, obviously the first and foremost question is uh, what is a surface and what are the surface dependent properties. And if you recall, uh, we did say that uh, for any solid, uh, whenever we look at the external surface, it, the surfaces could be internal as well as external, but we are primarily by surface, what we mean essentially is an external surface. So for a three-dimensional solid, we certainly will have certain external surface or so-called solid vapor surfaces. And this is where uh, the coordination or the, uh, the, uh, the surrounding um, atoms or ions or molecules, the species basically, um, the environment is going to be different. So, there will be at least one degree of freedom for any atom located at the surface than an atom which is in the center or in the interior of the solid. So, because of these at least one degree of freedom, there will be certain dangling bonds and the cumulative effect of these dangling bonds uh, give rise to what is known as surface tension per unit length or surface energy per unit area. So, the origin of surface energy as we understand is uh, due to the uh, unsaturated bonds or the cumulative effect of the unsaturated bonds at the surface. And this is true for all kinds of solids, not only pure solids, not only just metallic, ceramic or polymeric solids, but even composites, aggregates or all kinds of solids. But of course, the surface energy uh, varies depending upon the condition, the composition and prior history of the solid. And based on that, we have different manifestations of surface energy. Now, to a large extent, the surface energy uh, influences the surface dependent properties. So, as I said, uh, we define the surface in terms of its structure, the uh, atomic or ionic or uh, molecular aggregate that we are talking about, its composition. And there is always a possibility of little variation of the surface composition than the bulk composition because surface is always prone to absorbing impurities from the atmosphere around. We talked about surface energy just now which is a very important characteristic of the surface and obviously the various forms, various types of surface dependent properties. So, there are three major classes of surface dependent properties we have uh, uh, already talked about. One is the mechanical properties. Uh, namely the hardness, wear, friction and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, we can have uh, properties which are of um, uh, chemical nature, the corrosion properties, catalysis, oxidation, chemical option, uh, even um, uh, various kinds of uh, diffusional activities and so on. So, primarily depend upon the composition and the, the chemical, the Gibbs energy or the uh, chemical potential of the surface. Also, we talk about or, or, or we are concerned uh, with various physical properties like the adhesion, reflectivity, emissivity, uh, uh, for example, the optical emission properties or uh, simply the, uh, uh, the, the aesthetics or the appearance of the surface and color and so on. For we, we need to talk about surface dependent properties for various surface engineering, uh, surface engineering considerations or, or in general engineering considerations. Not, so, surfaces are important for various engineering considerations, be it design or life prediction or assessment or the performance properties, safety of the component, its reliability, the aesthetics, the look, appearance, the quality, uh, the cleaning uh, properties. Environment and environmental interaction, and obviously, a bit of modeling exercises. Now, there are various surface engineering techniques. Uh, I mean, just randomly, I have picked up a few here. We have talked about various coatings, various cladding processes, plating or deposition, 
then thermal and chemical treatment processes, polishing and grinding, implantation, various diffusional treatments, uh, surface melting, surface alloying and, and so on and so forth. Just picked up randomly some of these techniques. Uh, and what are the industries? Practically all, any, wherever we use a solid hardware and the surface of the solid is exposed to a certain uncontrolled atmosphere, that means it is not vacuum or it is not an isothermal condition or it is not, there is a possibility of change in temperature, pressure, moisture content or composition of the environment surrounding the solid. In all such cases, there could be a variation of uh, the manifestation of surface dependent properties. So, all uh, components associated with manufacturing, uh, exercise, automobile industry, aerospace, textile, biomedical applications, chemical and petrochemical, power and energy production devices, various defense applications, food packaging, machinery and uh, heavy industries, uh, mining operations, electrical and electronic devices, almost everything that one can think of. So, we as we just now mentioned, we divide them into three major classes, physical, mechanical and chemical. Uh, for example, roughness, color and reflection, emiss emissivity or emission characteristics, wettability, adsorption, adhesion, cohesion, all these uh, properties, we club them under the physical properties. Mechanical of course, is uh, well known, the hardness, the friction, wear resistance, uh, fatigue properties even fracture because these uh, are surface dependent, the failures mostly initiate at the surface, though to a large extent they are bulk properties, but initiation is always at the surface. Similarly, chemical properties in terms of reflectivity, oxidation, corrosion, catalysis, particularly high temperature oxidation processes and so on. Now, how do we approach the entire or the vast field of surface in engineering? And in fact, this is something um, um, you know, it's it's not very easy to uh, comprehend the entire scope in one uh, snapshot, but that's exactly what we have tried here. So, in terms of dimension, we already classified them into possibilities where we add on additive type, we only modify, don't change the dimension, or we remove from the surface, typically like polishing, grinding. So, when we when we coat and deposit or clad then we are doing addition. When we only change the microstructure and not change the composition or sorry, uh, not change the dimension, then we say simply modification or when we remove, then we say removal types of processes. The type of changes associated with any surface engineering process would be primarily of two types. When we do not change the composition and change only the microstructure, appearance and various other physical attributes, we call it physical approaches. The other, otherwise, in vast majority of surface engineering processes, we change the composition and we call them chemical um, surface engineering approaches. And these uh, physical or chemical methods can be uh, carried out either at ambient temperature or at elevated temperature. Now, we already said that property wise, we will be worried about the or we will be concerned with the mechanical properties, the chemical properties and a vast range of functional properties, I mean electrical, electronic, various types of physical properties which are of functional nature. In other words, which are not dependent on the activation based on mechanical forces or chemical interaction. So, the, the way we do surface engineering, for example, uh, anything that we want to uh, add on or introduce to the surface, modify the change surface composition or simply uh, bring the surface to some kind of activation or influence. These things we do in, in three or four possible ways. One is that we carry out the entire uh, process through solid, so entirely a solid state processing, for example, a diffusion coating. We can do, for example, a liquid, I mean we can uh, immerse the substrate in a liquid medium and then carry out certain diffusional process or chemical reaction process essentially in a liquid bath. So, it could be a conversion coating, it could be um, uh, liquid uh, carburizing or uh, uh, cyaniding and so on. A vast majority could be done in gaseous state, for example, plasma nitride, for example, gas nitriding or various gaseous processes, 
or in the vapor state like PVD, CVD and so on. We can also do things in the plasma state which actually allows us uh, to clean and as well as to coat, to deposit, um, to modify, uh, allow diffusion and various processes. The substrates can be any solid, essentially in one single word is any solid. So, which means it can be the metals and alloys, a vast majority of our discussion concerned with metals and alloys, could be semiconductors, could be glass, could be ceramic, polymers, even various aggregates and composites. So, can be mixtures of that, as large as uh, even concrete for example. So, that is why I said aggregates. The activation, the, the reason, the driving force where actually the changes uh, come from could be of mechanical nature, say for example, um, uh, say surface rolling or skin pass rolling or uh, short pinning and so on uh, or thermal in nature, a vast majority of them are thermal in nature, all these uh, diffusional processes. Um, it could be chemical in nature, could be a chemical reaction, um, various forms of uh, let us say anodizing or, na or nitriding um, liquid bath uh, uh, processes. Or, or gaseous processes, but changes happen because of the chemical reaction happening at the surface. It could be because of the various electrical forms like various forms of electrolysis or electrolysis based processes like platings and uh, depositions and, and so on. It could also we have at the end of the course we did have number of lectures on ion implantation, laser plasma, laser or uh, electron beam and so on. So, these are the sources of uh, various surface engineering processes happening. The, the almost all the surface engineering processes can be uh, broadly divided into two major categories in terms of the coating substrate interface. So, if this is the solid and if this is the coating on top of, uh, of the solid. So, this interface can either be an interface whereby if I just take a line profile across and then plot. Uh, uh, the composition uh, say of the solute element as a function of depth, we have two possibilities. One is where we have a sharp interface like this. So, this is the coating region where the composition is entirely different than the substrate region or the other possibility could be that we can have a diffused interface like this, where uh, the solute atom would have diffused until certain depth from the surface and this is a function, this usually is a function of temperature or maybe some other activation. So, whether the interface solid, uh, the substrate deposit interface is diffused or sharp, we can pra divide practically all kinds of surface engineering processes we have discussed so far. Now, uh, the user would be also uh, concerned about the investment, the cost. So, one majority of the processes are of the type where the, the conventional ones are of the type which are low capital cost, but high running cost because of the electricity, the uh, various chemicals and so on or labor cost and so on. So, these are mostly the conventional processes. Whereas, you can also have uh, uh, various other techniques like laser base, electron beam and so on, where the capital cost is large, but the running cost is fairly low because it is mostly automated. So, these are the so called modern surface engineering processes or techniques. Uh, coating dimension wise, uh, I mean this is a loose classification, not a very uh, strict or sacrosanct uh, division. Anything which has uh, more than a micrometer thick coating, we say thick coatings or thick films and so on and anything less than uh, 1 micrometer is uh, generally said uh, thin. So, all these PVD, CVD, sputtering, ion plating, ion implantation, all these processes are essentially thin uh, film coating or thin coating uh, technologies, whereas um, uh, cladding or plating or um, uh, carburizing, nitriding, all these are thick coating processes. There are certain hazards involved, uh, like any process, uh, we have to be very careful about uh, possibilities of certain toxic byproducts. For example, if you are dealing with uh, hexavalent chromium or dealing with uh, uh, phosphine or phosgene kind of uh, reactive gases, even chloride ions, or, um, uh, or there could be emission of, for example, in CVD processes, you generally have a byproduct which is uh, halide gas. So, you have you cannot throw it 
op open in the air, even in uh, various kinds of uh, liquid bath processes or gaseous bath processes, we do deal with toxic byproducts. So, one has to be careful about those things. There could be also quite a bit of uh, large amount of solid waste generated. All these uh, diffusional coating processes, when the pack is exhausted, it is not of use anymore then these packs can be actually, I mean over a period of time you tend to accumulate a lot of pack. So, uh, it is important that we try to reuse them or recharge and reuse them. Then there could be also liquid effluents, all these uh, acids and uh, other kinds of byproducts. So, the overall objective of surface engineering so to say and the overall scope I would say is, I mean all these techniques uh, starting all the way from uh, simple uh, uh, hot dip coating to all the way very sophisticated ion implantation. All these surface engineering processes, all these techniques basically could be used for various surface engineering applications. They could also be useful for various re repair, refurbishment and reclamation jobs and most importantly this is the modern approach of uh, or the modern uh, scope of graduating surface engineering to the wider scope of application which is essentially additive manufacturing. So, uh, this additive manufacturing as I said is nothing but uh, it essentially um, uh, is a larger version or a modified version of uh, cladding. So, you actually develop layer by layer and eventually develop a 3D product and hence it is called 3D printing or nothing but additive manufacturing. So, the overall scope, I mean uh, let us be, um, I mean this is something I am just repeating uh, which probably was part of one of the earlier lectures, very early lectures. So, this we have already discussed, no? the modification which is only changing the surface microstructure or composition without change in dimension or it can be removal based where we do cleaning, polishing, grinding and so on or we do addition which could be through the chemical method, through physical method or electrochemical method. So, more or less all these as you realize they all of these can be actually a physical type or chemical type where we are uh, not changing the composition or where we are changing the composition. So, when we are doing the modification, so let us say all these uh, altogether I had these uh, altogether from 1, 2, 3, 4 likewise. Um, we um, kept on making various uh, forms of changes and then um, all these put together we have identified some 15 different uh, variants of surface engineering approaches and they all essentially address the same uh, philosophy uh, tailored the surface microstructure and or composition. So, in terms of dimensional changes where uh, surface dimension is not changed, but only we modify as I said we can change only the microstructure or composition and these are the different methods and if we go deeper then these are the techniques we have discussed in, in various times. Uh, uh, anything starting from annealing, rapid thermal annealing, surface hardening, induction hardening, laser hardening or any other hardening process. So, it, it, this is basically a thermal process all these are essentially a thermally activated process. So, where we, uh, so essentially is a function of temperature and time and essentially we uh, change the atomic aggregate on the surface uh, or the thin films. So, that certain properties be it function, functional or um, uh, say conductivity, conductivity or maybe um, uh, strength and so on can be uh, tailored. There could be also processes which are mechanically activated. So, you essentially hit the surface uh, with stream of uh, hard spheres or allow ultrasonic wave to uh, hit the surface and create a shock wave uh, at very uh, high frequency for a very short duration, but creating a certain um, uh, force pulses um, uh, onto the surface so that the surface undergoes very thin layer of deformation and in the process create a residual uh, compressive stress on the surface. This could be also through skin pus rolling or uh, <coughs> simply hammering and so on and so forth. Then uh, the, these three, the groups of 3, 4 and 5, here we are changing composition. So, this is these two are only changing microstructure and 
here we are changing the composition as well. And how are we changing? Either by thermally activated diffusion. So, these processes are a function of temperature. So, temperature determines what will be the depth of penetration. Uh, these two plasma ion implantation and ion beam implantation, they are basically through, uh, these are ballistic processes. Whereas, uh, plasma ion implantation is also dependent on temperature. So, we modify the surface composition and hence certain properties depending on surface. There are vast majority of chemical reaction based modification, we do, where we do not necessarily change the uh, surface uh, dimension uh, significantly, though there could always be a little bit of changes or certain surface ripples can be formed because of surface tension forces. But uh, the whole process is dependent on chemical reaction or chemical changes, say anything starting from anodizing to various kinds of conversion coatings and so on. We need to clean the surface or remove, so we can do uh, anything like uh, say rubbing, polishing, uh, buffing, scuffing, chiseling, heavy or when we this are here the, the amount of material removal is uh, thin or small and here the material removal is large. So, so we can think of uh, grinding, polishing or machining, turning and so on. Buffing is not quite correct because uh, generally the material removal is very small here. Um, we can also remove materials and clean the surface and make it truly polished by way of electrochemical means where basically the dissolution from the anode will remove uh, ions selectively and in a controlled manner. So, it will remove the surface asperities and eventually make the surface more flat and less rough. It can be through di um, electro discharge machining. This is not for surface cleaning or polishing, but this is for pure machining operations. It, one can do plasma cleaning or plasma etching or even use an iron beam for uh, etching and cleaning. Um, even say for example, use puttering that is also one way of cleaning the surface. When you reverse the polarity, you actually eject atoms from the surface and that is how you clean the surface by sputter cleaning. You can do uh, dip cleaning or degreasing in a chemical bath for large components. You can do chemical polishing or dissolution where you actually may have a jet uh, incident onto the surface. So, if this is a solid surface and here is the nozzle and from the nozzle you throw a jet and you move the jet up and down uh, or uh, vary the angle of uh, incidence and then you can clean the surface. You can do etching where essentially you will have certain chemical reagent and you will put the sample into the bath for a certain period of time and you remove. But remember this etching can be chemical like this, it can be also through iron or through heat tinting uh, by simply heating or giving certain preferential chemical attack onto the surface. So, all possibilities exist. In the addition processes, we actually can do uh, various kinds of uh, chemical, physical and electrochemical methods, apply them. For example, galvanizing, hot dip coating, lacquering and painting. So, this is something which we have not discussed uh, much in, in the course, but is nevertheless very, very important for um, anything from a large wall of a building uh, to uh, uh, very um, sophisticated uh, electronic device um, or even decorative pieces. Uh, so, you basically may apply a transparent or translucent uh, uh, molecular coating, so that the surface of the metal or the semiconductor does not get exposed to atmosphere directly. You can also do roll bonding, so you actually can have multiple foils and then uh, let it pass through the roll and then eventually what comes out will be thinner than this, but this process in the process you actually make them bond well within this thickness. You can do pack rolling, you can do diffusion bonding uh, where you have by diffusion bonding what you mean is you actually have only two foils or two plates and you apply very heavy pressure and exposed to certain temperature. So, that this interface allows interdiffusion and forms a fairly strong bond. You can do deposition in the form of chemical vapor deposition or 
electrochemical vapor deposition or plasma assisted uh, deposition processes. So, when you change the composition or you actually create a comp surface with a different or a coating with a different composition than the substrate, you call it chemical vapor deposition processes. Otherwise, uh, you can also do, uh, you can do change the composition, but when, when a chemical reaction takes place into that in the atmosphere in the vapor state and then get deposited onto the surface, you call it CVD processes. But in PVD, of course, everything comes from the vapor state, but uh, there is no change in composition uh, between the target from which this vapor come and the coating which eventually forms onto the surface. So, in CVD, you have a chemical reaction uh, preceding the deposition or at the surface accompanying the deposition and hence the deposit has a different composition than the precursor, but in PVD you have the same composition as the target. You have various forms of uh, spray pr processes, thermal spray or plasma spray or deposition, also various high velocity processes like HVF for cold spray. Um, uh, similarly, you can have uh, uh, processes like sputtering which is through uh, one form of CVD, PVD, but uh, under the influence of certain potential difference where you direct the um, uh, certain agencies to actually scoop out uh, atoms from the target and then those atoms are deposited uh, onto the substrate. So, unlike PVD, the thermal activation is not the key here, it is uh, basically those ions particularly uh, argon ions which actually uh, scoop out atoms from the surface and then deposit elsewhere. So, that is the process. You can also in the process you can have multiple targets and make them react in the vapor state and deposit somewhat very similar to um, CVD, but the difference being that uh, what you plate, what you deposit actually is because of uh, surface reaction happening onto the surface. We can have ion plating uh, depositions, uh, ion assisted uh, uh, deposition. You can have plasma electrolytic oxidation. So, you take a substrate and then you allow uh, selective oxidation from the surface. So, that the metallic uh, grains here, these metallic grains here actually get selectively oxidized and this oxide and the metallic su substrate below are, uh, the, are fairly compatible. So, there is no immediate uh, decohesion expected or anticipated. Normally, when you deposit by let us say thermal spray or plasma spray an oxide layer on top a thick coating of oxide layer, compositionally structurally they are so different than the substrate, this interface is always uh, uh, a question, always a suspect. Whereas, when you do oxidation of the surface and allow oxides to grow like this from the bottom, then the compatibility is much better. One can do electro deposition or plating or you can even do co deposition. So, you can for example, create a, a surface with an alloyed layer by way of depositing A and B either uh, simultaneously or most often they are done sequentially. So, you have a very thin layer of A and then very thin layer of B or you uh, pulse in such high frequency that uh, in the process you do not necessarily create one layer of A and one layer of B. You actually within the layer itself you will have A, B, A, B so on and because of high surface diffus diffusivity they tend to intermix and form an alloyed uh, coating onto the surface. You can also do electroless deposition or electroless plating where the whole process is uh, uh, essentially because of uh, certain catalytic effect. So, if you have a bath and if you have uh, if you dip a particular, um, so without application of any potential difference. So, there is no completed circuit, there is no electrically closed circuit, but yet when you uh, dip certain uh, metal because of the autocatalytic effect immediately uh, the ions uh, which are available in the bath will have a tendency to deposit onto this and then form a coating. So, that is electroless coating. So, this is the overall uh, scope of the entire uh, surface engineering uh, course that we have discussed. Now, I must tell you that you have to, um, uh, I mean I must admit that uh, there are multiple textbooks available, but there is no single textbook as on date which can cover the entire scope of surface engineering that we have uh, discussed in this course. So, you have to refer to various uh, 
sources, various resources, uh, including the certain good literature available in the internet. But I would strongly advise you to rely more upon the reviewed resources, um, uh, including uh, technically technical papers published in the journals, but otherwise textbooks or reference books, handbooks, even internet sources. This could be very good uh, material for you for your self study. And always, uh, uh, whenever you uh, face any difficulty, you are free to write to me uh, an email, or uh, we probably soon will have an uh, open discussion session, and there you can raise your questions. But please send your questions beforehand so that I have a short and um, composed reply ready for you. Uh, but overall, I would end up saying that any solid, any hardware, primarily if it is a solid substance, solid substrate and is in contact with the atmosphere either at room temperature or elevated temperature or is undergoing certain interaction which is of mechanical origin or thermal origin or chemical origin or there are various forms of activations possible. So, under such influences the failure or degradation of the sur of the component is most likely to happen from the surface. So, how do you protect the surface and in the process the entire component the bulk that is all about surface engineering. So, uh, again uh, approaches are very different um, and uh, what is important is that you understand the philosophy, you understand the mechanism, you understand the driving force for certain processes why they are happening and also understand the various forms of surface dependent properties and the way they can be improved upon or they can be uh, safeguarded and that is all, all uh, which is included in surface engineering. So, I wish you learnt uh, reasonably well um, and I could make you interested in the subject and uh, hopefully uh, you will be able to this knowledge uh, in your profession um, and uh, certainly serve the society in a very, very effective manner. So, thank you very much and wish you all the very best.